How do you know what is true? What if truth is inconvenient? What if truth doesn't match up with what you already know? Have you ever found out that something you believe to be true actually wasn't true at all? Ooh, that can be hard, can't it? My name is Ian Curry and this is Thinking Out Loud. Come on, let me tell you what I think. You might know, I have a dog. His name is Sparky and he loves having his ears rubbed. Now, most dogs don't really like you messing with their ears, but Sparky loves it. And once you start stroking his ears, he'll snuggle, and some say he even purrs like a cat. If you stop, he'll push his head against your leg and follow you around until you give him some more attention. He has another habit, a rather naughty habit I'm trying to discourage. If you happen to be drinking a nice cup of tea with friends, he'll go from one person to the other and see if someone will give him a piece of whatever it is they're eating with their tea. If unsuccessful, he'll move on to the next person until he gets what he wants. You can always tell who's breaking the rule and slipping him a piece of their cookie because there will be Sparky right beside them. He's choosing to be near the one who is giving him what he wants. As a child, some of us would do exactly the same thing. Dad, can I have some chocolate? No, it will spoil your dinner. Mom, can I have some chocolate? No, it will spoil your dinner. But why? <laughs> and we keep asking and whining in the hope that we'd get a different answer, depending who we'd ask, and perhaps hoping that someone would change the answer just to stop us asking over and over again. As adults, there's a tendency to do exactly the same thing. I suppose old habits die hard. We go from one to another, one news outlet to the next, until we hear what it is we want to hear. What we want to hear may or may not be the truth, but nonetheless, because we like that answer, we like what we hear, we'll choose to listen to that. I suppose food and health warnings are another good example of this. Some health warnings tell us too much of whatever it is is bad for us. Then another announcement tells us the same thing helps with this or that ailment. First, eggs and bananas are bad for us. And then they're the best thing since sliced bread. But of course, sliced bread is bad for us. Until it isn't. <laughs> so how do we know what is true? Are eggs safe to eat or bad for us? I had an egg on toast for breakfast, so I expect either the toast or the egg will be on someone's list of things I shouldn't eat. In the end, we sometimes have to decide what is true ourselves, but what do we think is true? Yes, we gather information, we read a few articles, perhaps in extreme cases have a doctor tell us what we should or shouldn't eat. But I have a sneaking suspicion that when it comes to food especially, we choose truth, the facts we look at, based on what we want to hear. I like eating egg on toast. I like sitting with a lovely cup of coffee and having a read first thing in the morning. I like what I like. And so, of course, favour the articles that say an egg a day keeps the doctor away. Or was that an apple? Hmm, I, I can't remember. Must be an egg. I like eggs, so that's it then. <laughs> Do you see how silly that way of thinking is? It seemed very innocent and not very important, but I was choosing truth, wasn't I? Listening to things we like and then pretending those things are true is very silly, but so 
easy to do. It's just like Sparky coming to me and wanting his ears rubbed. Now, as always, this is nothing new at all. Paul warned Timothy of this very thing long ago. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. Do you see how it works? I'm sure you do. These days there are so many strange new ways of thinking. There's certainly a tendency for people to choose what suits their way of thinking and listen only to that. Whatever their itching ears want to hear. Just because everyone I know says one thing, does not mean that that one thing is true. Who are you listening to? Every time I see Sparky wanting his ears rubbed, I think about how him loving that is so like what Paul is saying to Timothy there about listening to things that we enjoy rather than the things that are true. Now, so far, I've only pointed out the problem. If we're honest, we probably already know that problem. There are so many examples of it these days, aren't there? What's the answer, though? How do we actually know what is true? What is truth? And does it even matter? <laughs> well, of course it does. Somewhere along the way, instead of listening to what we like to hear and letting others define truth, we have to turn to a known standard, an absolute. Now, in my own life, of course, I've long ago realised that only God provides an, any absolute and only truth based on God's principles will stand the test of time. So, how do we listen to God? How do we hear from Him? Putting our own ideas aside and starting by having a read of the Bible is a good start, of course, but letting God influence our lives, letting Him show us what is true and what is not, is harder than it seems. The clutter and noise around us is there always. Pushing the distractions of all of that aside can be very hard, can't it? Perhaps sitting down and stroking Sparky's ears is a good thing. Certainly it gives me time to think and read and hang out with God. This week, why not try to find a few minutes to read something new? Something that you know to be true, but perhaps don't enjoy quite as much as that favourite ear-tickling news station. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>